In the past two videos, we've been working with just some of the basic mechanics of dealing with the epsilon permutation symbol. Uh, in video number two, we showed how the uh, determinant can be expressed using the epsilon permutation symbol. Here it is for a 3 by 3 determinant. Um, if we had an n by n determinant, then we would have an n number of a's here. And beneath the epsilon symbol, we would have an n number of indexes. And then in the last video, we showed how the vector product can be expressed using the epsilon permutation symbol. And what we're going to do in this video is show how a cross b equals minus b cross a. We want to do that, though, by using the properties of the uh, epsilon permutation symbol. Now, you're probably used to thinking of it in these terms that a cross b would be expressed as this determinant, and b cross a would be expressed as this determinant. But to go from here to here, what that means is that we interchange the B row with the A row. And when you do that, that gives us a negative sign. If we had an N by N determinant here with an N number of rows, and if we interchange those rows an odd number of times, then that changes the sign of the determinant. If we had an N by N um, determinant and we shuffled those rows around an even number of times, then the sign of the determinant remains unchanged. But here we did it once. Once is an odd number, so the negative sign crops up. So that's probably how you're used to thinking of why A cross B is a negative of B cross A. What we want to do in this video is just very quickly demonstrate why this is true but do it by using the properties of the epsilon permutation symbol. So here is A cross B. And remember how this is set up now from the uh, previous video. This is the cross product in component form. A, B, these have to, the order of these has to match, E sub K. And the order of these indexes here have to match. Now, of course, a sub i and b sub j, these are just scalars. Here's the expression for vector a. Here's the expression for vector b. And as we explained in the first video, we have repeated indexes. That means we're just summing over that. So this would be a1, e1, plus a2, e2, plus a3, e3. Same thing here with that repeated index. But of course, that means the a sub i's, the b sub j's, those are just a collection of scalars. What we're doing here is just multiplying scalars together. But now let's think about what would this be then for b cross a. And that will equal epsilon b a b k but b now we're having the index i or excuse me the index j a has i so this is j i k so this has to be j i k and indeed that is how we'd express the cross product of b cross a in component form using the epsilon permutation symbol. Now remember in the last video that here's our prototypical sequence then. And if we shuffle these indexes around or permute them an even number of times, then our epsilon symbol has a value of plus 1. If we deviate from this by having an odd number of permutations, then the epsilon permutation symbol has 
a value of minus 1. Of course, we have j i k. But what that means is that we can say that epsilon j i k is just minus epsilon i j k. So let's see if we can apply that to our problem. Going back to here, this we want to say, well, that's the same thing as minus epsilon ijk. But we have to be careful because if we, ch whatever sequence these are in here has to match the sequence of indexes that we have up here. So that means we have to change the order of these. Well, that's perfectly valid because all we're doing is multiplying two scalars together. The order in which we multiply them together doesn't matter. So we can indeed write this as a i b sub j e k. Perfectly valid. But when we do that, now we have to think about what are the consequences of that. Because this right here, that is expressing A cross B in component form. So what we have shown then is that B cross A equals minus A cross B. But we did it now by using the properties of the epsilon permutation symbol. Really, that's all there is to it. It's a simple thing to show, but we just want to take a couple of minutes and demonstrate that. Now, what we're going to do in the next video is show that the scalar triple product, say A dot B cross C, that can be written in component form using the epsilon permutation symbol. like this. And we will prove that in the next video. And then when we do that, we will prove some of the basic vector identities of the scalar triple product, again by using the properties of the epsilon permutation symbol. And that will be the next video. Once we do that, then we'll have the foundation laid so that we can prove this equation. And then once we understand this, and we have um, indeed proved that it's true, then this is a very, very powerful tool for proving complicated vector identities. Once we establish this, we will use that to prove among other vector identities. We will use it to prove this vector identity. We will use it to prove this vector identity. And we will use it to prove this vector identity, among others. So that is what will be happening in the uh, future uh, videos. And the playlist for all the videos uh, with our super uh, powerful vector identities technique that playlist is at the website digital-university.org.